What's up, everyone? You are listening to the Rival and Queen podcast. I'm Ashley. And I'm Sarah. Happy, so happy Thursday. We're so happy to be here with you. We're so happy. Our juice cleanse is behind us. But when we're recording <laughs> this, it's the very end of our juice cleanse. Yes. Uh, the last night. The last night. You just finished your last juice. Yeah. I had the dessert one. I have one more to go. But like, let's talk about this. Oops. How did you find the juice cleanse? Good. I was a little bit hungry the first day. Just a little bit. Throughout the day, I felt hungry Mm. constantly. And also, it's a habit, obviously, to eat and think about food. So your mind does go, oh, what will I have for supper? Or what am I going to make? But today, day two is easier. Way easier. Like, I don't feel hungry. I feel good. I love this. I like that, that you feel like, yeah. So we're doing a two day juice cleanse from Sprout Therapy. We have eight juices every day. I thought I was going to hate this. Like when they talked to us about doing it, I was eyes eyes rolling. (laughs) I like told them, I was like, just so you know, I'm going to probably be complaining about this the whole time. I love this juice cleanse. Actually, like I haven't been hungry at all. I've like been every time I think about food, I just like have another juice Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, the days go by fast, I, faster than you think. Yeah, I'm actually shocked. We could do, we could have done a third day. So I like this. Well, Candace did tell us we could add on a day, but we're not going to. But now we no. know for the next time that we're capable and we like it. And we like it. So I, I was very impressed. If anyone out there has, has been thinking about a juice cleanse and wants to try one out, I think you should. Like mm-hmm. I, I thought it was going to be terrible. It's been good. And I think honestly, start with the two day. Don't just yeah. do a one day because. It gets easier. It does. So I don't, I feel like the first day you're not really reaping like the benefits either. And like you told me, and I sort of just never believed, well, not that I didn't believe, but it's like super convenient to not have to cook food. So honestly, no dishes, no food. My mind is blown. And thank you for to Sprout Therapy for hooking us up. That's this is awesome. Because prior to that, we had an extravagant stay. I know. We've, (laughs) so the last week we've been doing everything. Last week, well, actually, yeah, okay. Last week we stayed at the Sutton Place Hotel and with voter Lived retreats. Yeah, that was our first. I haven't been to a hotel. When was the last time you were in a hotel? So we we talked about this when we were there. I've stayed in lots of like cabins. I, I stayed at Fox Harbor twice last year, which right. kind of has like that no. feel, but it's not the same as a hotel like the elevator. I mean like that. an official hotel. I'm pulling no. up my phone right now to actually like pull up a hotel reservation. Because I went to Florida prior to the pandemic, but I didn't stay in a hotel. I stayed with my in-laws. Right. So I don't know. Like this is what I'm like. But some people do like staycation more. We just don't. We just don't. And I can't tell you the last time I stayed in a hotel. I actually think it was definitely 2019. And probably in the fall or something. The closest one was when I stayed at the B&B. But again, I'm thinking. Oh, I know when I did. Tell me. It's when I was in Kitchener, Waterloo Mm. for Fierce Founders cohort. I was there at the end of January and then the end of February. And then the pandemic happened in March. So that was it. And it was a beautiful hotel. I loved it. So my last one was when I was in Greece in Athens. That's the last hotel I stayed in. So that would have been August 2019. Crazy. All that to say is it was such a treat. I mean, it's just kind of funny, but it was such a treat to stay at a proper hotel, do a staycation. The Sutton Place Hotel is gorgeous. And like we were both just loving being Mm -hmm. in our own queen size beds with like big fluffy hotel pillows. I want to go back and honestly shout out to Lori, who is is head of uh, sales and marketing there, who we met. And she's so sweet. And she gave us a tour and we are not getting paid to say this. We just feel the vibe. <laughs> like we're, we were into it. We were into it. And uh, we got a tour of a bunch of the different suites and yeah. they are so beautiful. We're going back. We are going. I like, I think it was, we've talked about going on a staycation. I just think anyone should go do it. Like it's opens your heart and mm-hmm. we can't, we still can't go far from home. Just invest. Go. Just five minutes down the street. <laughs> just go to the hotel for the night or two nights. You will love it. Mm-hmm. And also we have to thank Vote of Retreats because while yes. we were at the hotel, they set us up with these like spa experiences. Two. Yeah, two of them. And we had such 
a hilarious time. If you follow our Instagram, we did like two or three Instagram. <laughs> we were just like, in our robes. I had my sunglasses on for one of them. <laughs> lived in the robes. Yeah. Had the room service, had face masks on, lip masks. I was in a bathtub. The only, so nice. the only thing I forgot about bath. So I love baths. I don't have a bath at my house as many no. of you know, but, um, do uh, they? Well, I think we talk about it that I don't know. It just seems creepy. Like many of you know. Many of you know. You've been in my bathroom. You've seen my bathroom. You know I have no bathtub. (laughs) You know. No, you don't know that. But we've talked about in the podcast that I love baths and I don't have a bathtub. So I've been missing it. And they gave us, um, Voda ensured that we had a room with a bathtub so that I could take a bath. (laughs) Thank you, Rebecca. And I loved it. But the only thing is, is like when I forgot that when you take baths late at night, you get like so warm. And so I was in bed. Like, I couldn't even have the blankets on me. I was like out of the Sweat. bed. And we also just had sweating. the AC on. So yes. it was just you. I think. And at one point, like my hands were burning. Like I was actually like, should I go take a cold shower? Oh, oh. For, for bathtubs. <laughs> Those bathtubs will get you every time. No, but like Sarah said, definitely. And do the Voda add-on if you're feeling it. If you're feeling, Oh, yeah, if you're at the Sun Place. Yeah, if you're at the Sun Place. Or you can reach out to Rebecca directly um, and learn more at VodaRetreats.com because she'll, she kind of is very customizable on how she'll do your retreat. Yeah, if you want to just create an experience for you or for you and some friends, she can help you create something, like craft she's something. She's a master. Yeah, she's really, she has a gift for that, for creating like beautiful experiences. And we were so lucky to bond in our friendship. What was your favorite thing? My favorite thing was the 21 questions. So oh, there's like nice. the questions for us to ask each other. That was 100% my favorite. What was your favorite? We might have to use a few for Queenie Grant. We'll Grimms. give her full credit. We'll say this is a voter <laughs> question. What was my favorite thing? Um, I don't know. I really loved the little cup we got, the tumbler. I was knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so you're going to love stuff Dr- like that. Drinkware. Reusable stuff. Yeah, and it's so cute and it's white. I like it. I know it's a, it was lovely. So don't get rid of those. Oh, and if you're watching on YouTube, we have matching bracelets. The Moda bracelets were super. I can't see mine. We are adorable. The black heart. We've just been having so much. I feel like the last week feels like a lifetime. Like we've done so much. We had the hotel so stay, the retreat. Mm-hmm. We've done a juice cleanse. The other thing we've d- done, uh, we must be in spring, like for our audience. We probably also sound crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like you must think we're nuts. But like the other thing we've done is stop drinking caffeine. We stopped. I stopped Sunday. You stopped Saturday for two weeks. I'm going to go with Sunday though. Just to- Okay. Stick it out with so you. So we're so okay. Sunday so, to Sunday. So we're on day four. How have you felt? Have you had withdrawal? So like Sarah just said that I stopped Saturday, but what that means is I only had decaf coffee. I had two. I didn't finish either of them because they were not good. <laughs> um, because I really enjoy strong, delicious coffee. That day I felt very irritable and I was tired, really tired. Yeah. I really did feel it. Now, I think the juice cleanse was really good timing for that since it does boost your energy and and saves up energy in your body that I don't feel that now. I feel like it also just keeps me busy. Like I'm not thinking about not drinking coffee because I have to drink so many juices. That's true. That's true. But I am excited. I'm definitely going to sprout therapy tomorrow to get like a turmeric latte or some type of extravagant, delicious hot drink non-coffee beverage Mm -hmm. i haven't um so i i've had no withdrawal symptoms at all which i don't think is that shocking you don't drink like a ton i only drink like a cup of coffee a day but and the last day on saturday i made a one-shot espresso and then had two sips and forgot to drink the rest of it so that happens one oh sorry go ahead i just like i haven't been as clear in the afternoon and i'm wondering if that is like a fogginess from it i feel the opposite you feel clearer. I actually had a call later in the day, like over supper time today, and I felt so in it. Like I felt focused. I felt <laughs> it was weird. And I think it's a combination of the cleanse and caffeine. And I, then it led me, as one does, to Google brain fogginess and caffeine. And it's a thing. That you, if you drink coffee, you get brain fog. I'm wondering if I, if that's my like withdrawal, like it's coming maybe, back. Maybe, maybe. I'm interested to see over the next like five days how I feel. I will tell you, like I, the cleanse has been easy and exciting and fun. The idea of now just not having anything to drink for the next nine days or eight days seems like 
Weird. Well, I just want to drink coffee for the hell of it. Not oh. because I'm craving caffeine, but I'm like, what's going to be like the delicious? Get a, just get a, like a, even a decaf cappuccino. You could try that. I'll get the turmeric latte. We have a coffee. Anyways, we'll talk after. We'll figure this out. Okay, so that's the fun. We've been like living our best lives in spring, which yeah. is like spring has sprung. Spring has sprung. Arrival and queen. We are just doing all the things. But today we have a very special episode for you. Very. Carla Saunders is here with us who I went to high school with, which is a lovely little... that's so cool. I I only found that out the other day, and she is lovely. You had a girl crush on Oslam. I feel like I have a girl crush on Carla. Like, I want to go to Toronto and meet her. She's so sweet. Oh, she is so so sweet. I've always really, like, like loved Carla. She's really, really nice and, like, a kind person. She's, like, the brains and the beauty. The brains and the beauty. So she is a lawyer, but she's also a creative, and that's why we had her on today, was to talk about kind of that identity of leaning into your creative side or stepping into those callings Mm -hmm. even when it sometimes doesn't match your other identities and it's just like such a great conversation I think I love how she puts herself out there she's got an an Instagram called at call her Carla Uh, she also has a blog where she writes but really she's just putting herself out there celebrating fashion and beauty Um, and whatever comes to her she just kind of like creates it has a vision like we talked about in the episode that she had a stunning white blazer suit on with lace under it and held a bag of Miss Vicky chips which were amazing and took this beautiful photo yeah so I feel like she just it's it's authentic from her yeah and so she's sharing those things and she's also sharing her writing and it's just been really fun to admire from afar kind of seeing her do that and putting herself out there in that way and sometimes I think we we stop ourselves or we stifle ourselves from Mm. exploring our creative passions because of who we think our identity is. So it's a really nice conversation just exploring kind of the freedom to try out all the things that pull us. And definitely so relatable. Momgasm comes to mind right now too when we (laughs) talk to the ladies that it was hard for them. They kind of empower women to be, as they say, juicy and also be a mom, that you can be both. And I think this is very true for Carla and her kind of path is I can be a lawyer and I can be a creative and I can do what I want. She's the most fabulous lawyer lawyer you'll ever meet. That's mm-hmm. what I'm convinced. <laughs> I will tell you if you're listening on YouTube, we love you. We made a I messed up. Mess I forgot up. to record the video. <laughs> We've never done that before. We were too excited. Too excited. And she looked amazing, but we'll share lots of beautiful photos. Yes. So we'll have all the links in the show notes for Carla, Sprout Therapy, Voter Retreats, Sun Place, all those people that we've been loving and enjoying. Um, Let's dive in. All right. We'll see you guys on the other side. We are so excited to welcome Carla into the virtual podcast studio because you're in Toronto. So welcome. I am. Thank you so much. So glad to be here. We're so, so, so happy to have you. We're just laughing because we're sipping on our juices because Sarah and I are finishing up our juice cleanse and you're mm-hmm. enjoying some nice bubbly. So we a little bubbly on Tuesday. Ooh, you look Never great. Heard oh, anyone? you have a fancy champagne glass there too. That's like an actual one, isn't it? Yeah. Little coupe glass. Yeah. Love yeah. that. All class Fun. over there. <laughs> yeah. Serious. Yeah, right. And we're so, so happy to have you because Carla and I actually went to high school together. So this is like a beautiful coming together yes. years down the road. Yeah, it's so great. And it's Love something it. like I've been, you know, we've been following each other for years through social media. And it's mm-hmm. been so cool to kind of um, see your career grow as a lawyer, but also on the creative mm-hmm. side. And I think I said to you the other day, it's just been something I've admired so much from afar, seeing you really lean into your creative side and law of lipstick, call her Carla and just kind of expressing yourself mm-hmm. through your writing and fashion and something that I admire a lot about you. Thank you so much. It's so <laughs> sweet. I know I feel like, you know, once you put it out there, it's like you don't know who's watching or who's reading it or who's following along, but it's so nice to hear that you love it. So yeah, it's awesome. No, um, do you want me to just start talking about the journey or do you yeah. want to start? Okay. Yeah. Let, let's um, start. Like, tell us about, yeah. So from the beginning basically is like yeah. one of the reasons that I, I think I really admire seeing that so much is because you are a lawyer, you have this mm-hmm. like really big career on that side, but you also have this really big creative side that you have been expressing. And I think that's something that we're so interested in understanding is how have you been kind of balancing both of these and mm-hmm. also even starting with the creative side of your work? 
honestly, it's been so hard. It's been a labor of love, definitely, mm -hmm. uh, from the get-go. Um, I think I was telling you guys earlier that uh, the name, The Law of Lipstick, started in law school, of course, yes. right? Um, one of my girlfriends, we were out having drinks, we talked about makeup, and she was like, you know what, you should start a blog. You should call it The Law of Lipstick. And I don't think I've ever given her proper credit for that. But I mean, like it's, it was such a great idea. We kind of laughed it off. And I was like, oh, no, I'd never be able to do that. Um, I think when you get to law school, you're so focused on succeeding and getting through. I think, honestly, law school was a shock in its own because you're coming from every different, people are coming from different areas and it's like mm -hmm. the cream of the crop in one, in, in one class. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I need to focus on getting through this. I need to figure out where I fit, um, what I want to do. I mean, so many people end up not pursuing law after law school, but just kind of going different paths. And so I guess I kind of considered that for a little bit too. Um, but yeah, so I guess I was in law school. We had been talking about it then. It was kind of percolating, but I was like, I don't know how to do it. I think Instagram was starting around then, but I didn't, I didn't approach it that way. Um, and then it was years later, once I was in St. John's and going through some huge life changes, uh, that I kind of started doing some portrait shooting, um, started working with different creative people. I was getting my friends to shoot like my outfits, my makeup. And I was like getting like suggestions. Yeah. And people were like, so what are you going to do next? Or like, what do you think about this? Or have you tried this makeup? And I was like, oh, and honestly, from all this experience, I thought I had like the license to post this stuff because I did a, like a year stint at Clinique at Sears. Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm definitely aging myself, but I, love that. I felt like I knew <laughs> what I was talking about for some reason. Now I feel like there's so much out there that it's like, you're still learning, but yeah. So it started that way. I started doing some portrait stuff and I feel, felt like this whole world of creativity had been like reopened because in high school I wrote, um, was super into fashion, makeup, all that stuff. Yeah. I remember, um, like, I remember you having that creative side and like, just for context mm -hmm. for everyone listening, much like Ashley, yeah. we went to high school in a very small town. There was mm -hmm. not a lot of like creativity in fashion. You remember no. those people that kind of stand. Well, out. you stand out so easily, but you, I mean, not you particularly, Carla, but I mean, mm -hmm. you, you did because you had like a sense of fashion when that didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Because I feel like some other people are probably like, take better credit for that but I feel um yeah like when you're growing up in a small town it's hard to be like I'm different it's cool to be different I'm unique and it's great yes. for all these reasons I think it's really hard to kind of foster that so you kind of find like I took the lock route because I thought that would be like the right thing to do mm -hmm. and I really enjoy my career but I mean in the meantime I was pushing all my creativity all my creative interests aside just to pursue this other dream um, so you kind of lose sight of one thing when you're looking at the more serious, logical career path. You were um, just at least so that was my experience. Down. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. How did it feel when you were getting your friends to take photos of you or giving advice around makeup or whatever to your friends? Like mm -hmm. how did that kind of feel and how did that ignite that creativity to take it further? It was such a fun thing because even during undergrad, I when my friends would come to my dorm room and I'd do their makeup. Like that was always the thing. Um, I remember that now. It's so awesome. That was look back and like, yeah. I used to awesome. do people's hair and makeup all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is fun. You know, I didn't think much more of it, but that was always like my thing. Um, but yeah, once I was in St. John's, one of my girlfriends, I actually worked with her. She was in marketing. So she was completely into the PR and, and, you know, all this stuff. And so I remember sitting down to brunch at Merchant and Rachel was like, so what do you want to do with it? What do you want to achieve? What's your audience? Like she was asking me these great questions. And I was like, I just want to put it out there. Like, I don't know how to do it. And then the, the law of lipstick Instagram kind of started from there. Um, and we'd be on our coffee breaks and I'd be like, Rachel, can you get a picture of this outfit? And like, we'd go inside and like take a quick photo. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm also a lawyer. Like, what am I doing? But like, I feel like, it was the way of like escaping everything that was going on in my life at the time. Um, big life changes. Um, I was, I guess I'll just say this much. I was um, 
ending an engagement, canceling a wedding. Yeah, like a uh, lot. Selling a house, like all the great stuff, you know, just normal stuff. No, um, but it was, yeah, it was a lot of change. And so I, at the time, I was glad that I had found this outlet. And so I was kind of pouring into that while still trying to grow my career. I was in litigation, so I was in court, um, you know, all the time. I feel like it was like a very demanding time to be going through emotional stuff, uh, grieving, uh, being creative. But I, I tried to channel that into mm. my creative life so I could focus at work. Um, yeah. One of the questions I have a- around that, because I've noticed it in myself as my, one of my own hesitations, and, and we've talked about this, is like, mm-hmm. were you afraid when you were starting to put your creative work out through Instagram and stuff? Like, even of what your employer would think or what some of your coworkers mm-hmm. were think. Like, what were some of mm-hmm. those fears that were, were like, hanging on you? I was <laughs> so afraid. I was, like, just waiting for the digs or waiting for the comments mm-hmm. or waiting for this or that, you know? Um, especially when I first started, because it was really focused on my face and like my body. And I was like, I, I think that was my first, I had never done that before. And finally, like I, someone had opened that up to me and I started doing that stuff. And I was like, this is never something I would have envisioned doing. Um, but I really enjoyed it. It was a great, um, it was a great kind of I guess some of your stuff is like very sexy in an amazing way. (laughs) Like I love it. Like I'm like, damn. And I like love seeing that. I love seeing you put yourself out there in that way. And it's like empowering or Mm -hmm. I think it's really Mm -hmm. empowering. And I love seeing Mm -hmm. you do that because I'm like, this is, Mm -hmm. has been in you your whole freaking life. And it just like, totally just now putting it out there. It is scary though, because you feel vulnerable and the judgment, I don't know. It's just like taking that leap, even with the podcast, um, mm-hmm. I always wanted to do something. I could never put my figure on it, finger on it, but wanted to put myself out there. And mm-hmm. you, that's even a leap of faith for Sarah and I just being mm-hmm. like, we're going to put conversations and ourselves mm-hmm. out there and do experiences and share them with everyone in our community. So it is something that you just have to like, you just have to do it. I know, but it you is to take the risk. Yeah. yeah. And I, I feel, yeah. At the time I was like, this has been sitting in the back of my brain for so long. I need to just do it. And so, yeah, it started with that kind of stuff, but then it kind of, it started to transform and Mm -hmm. kind of move into just more of my words and kind of putting the brain part into it, you know, not just legally blonde, you know, kind of adding the intellectual side, but yeah, I think, but that being said, like, I think that I, I wanted to make sure that people thought that, or at least give the impression that, you know, fashion isn't frivolous, caring about yourself isn't frivolous, your makeup and how you appear and show up in this world is very important for everyone, I feel. And I think that, Mm. you know, some people are quick to knock, like being high maintenance or whatever else it is. But I mean, like, maybe you're low effort. I don't know. Like, (laughs) like, you know, like when people are, are quick to be like, why do you think, how do you think so much of yourself? I don't think, and that's not it because you have no idea how much self doubt I have every time I post something Mm -hmm. or I'm looking at a photo of myself and I'm like, Oh, I don't know. Like sometimes I wonder if it's um, like helping my self confidence or hindering it. Right. So, yeah. So I think that that's a big part of it too. Like people need to know that it's not because I feel great all the time. It's because you kind of have this feeling like, yeah. But you're also allowed to feel great all the time. Sarah's like, gonna you, jump this is like, like, like you, you like you're amazing. Feel amazing. <laughs> Look amazing. Be amazing. You're allowed right. to put yourself out there that way. And like, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. And I think some people do like push up against you because of it. But for other mm-hmm. people, it's like inspiring to see like, mm-hmm. right, I can make myself look beautiful and like my most sexy and take photos mm-hmm. and <laughs> like look fabulous and put them out there and you're allowed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You're allowed. You have, this is your permission slip. You know, I feel mm. like just because I have this side doesn't mean I can't have the other side too. You can't, no. you can be both. Yes. Like I know I was saying to you guys recently, like that's a very recent discovery of mine that I can all be a lawyer and a creative. The way I'm a creative will morph over the years. It will change my legal practice. It will morph my personal life. Like everything it kind of plays off each other, but you can be both and you can be more than two things. You can be five million things if you want to, as long as you are happy with that. That's the, that's the bottom line. And like to go back to like worrying if my colleagues were going to see it, if, you know, 
my boss, like she actually made a comment one time before I left Newfoundland, um, how's your modeling going? And it was, I'm pretty sure it was sincere, you know, and, yeah. but she was genuinely just curious to see how I was doing with my creative stuff because how many people come through and do that? I don't know, going through the firm and all that stuff. I'm not sure. Um, I was just really out there at the time. And I know that I'm still really out there. And sometimes I can't believe that I had the courage to put myself out there and I continuously do that. But, you know, I think that it's, you kind of have a drive somewhere to put, to be more and to, to mm. find out what that more is. I think that's a big deal because some people are, know their path. I'm like people who know their path. I feel so envious because I'm like, wow, you know what you want and you've always known what you wanted. And for me, I'm like, I know I want more, mm -hmm. but how will that show up? I'm not sure. I feel like it's going to be a bunch of different things. So, well, and we are so yeah. much more than our work. Like that just doesn't, yeah. those, yeah, things, that too. they tend to define us or kind of be ingrained in us. But it's mm -hmm. like a, a mother is not just a mother. Like they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're who they are as well. Mm -hmm. And so much more. And it's reminding mm -hmm. me of our conversation with Oslam because she, who owns Hosomoda, she always mm -hmm. looks fabulous. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, she's got the jewels, the whole thing. And she said she's worried that people do judge her because she does put that, like herself effort into herself, I guess, or her appearance, but it's just what she enjoys and she loves fashion and doing that. And, and she's she even worried about yeah. going to drop her daughter off at school. What will the other mothers think if I show up in heels and a blazer? And mm -hmm. I don't know. It's interesting. Right? Yeah. It is super interesting. And how we limit ourselves. Like too, do men think people. that like they're showing up in a suit and they're feeling like good. I can tell. Yeah. I guarantee you that they don't worry about that. <laughs> well, I think it is an interesting conversation around, um, you know, kind of that balance of masculinity and femininity in your work, right? Because mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. in like a very male dominated field in law. Um, and that's something that we can certainly relate to as well in tech and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so it is like, are you showing up as too much or trying to get comfortable? Mm -hmm. I think, like you said, being able to show up as a woman and as your whole self, and mm -hmm. still fit into that box of a lawyer. Mm -hmm. and so I do it to myself all the time. Yeah. It's like, no matter what I'm doing creatively, I'm like, wait, do I fit into this box I've created for myself? But I don't, I can't fit into the box. So it's always that struggle of I'm creating this for myself. Society is creating it for me. Other people are creating it for me. Why I can't do it to myself. Like it's kind of hard. It's a struggle. For sure. I think it's like mm -hmm. a good experience though. And like you said, you, you did have a really big realization around this recently that, you know, we're, yeah, we have our, the rules we set up around certain identities and, and we mm -hmm. can, they don't have to stay that way. Like they can change. That's right. right. It can, it's fluid. Like, you know, the same way that I let go of the law of lipstick when I kind of moved into, I just feel like I outgrew it and I had no issues dropping it. Interesting. And I actually talked to that same friend who has guided me through my Instagram journey. Um, and I was like, Rachel, I really think I want to drop it. And she was like, if you feel like you should do it. Why, did, it you, why did you let it go? Why did Law of Lipstick go away? I felt like it was, it kind of signified a part of my life that I didn't want to carry forward. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it was a time in my life when I was going through all kinds of different things. I was moving provinces and changing jobs. Um, Fresh I just didn't feel like me anymore. And I just, I needed a little change. And then I even struggled to come up with Call Her Curla, but um, that took a while. But still, it felt more authentic than the law of lipstick. So, right. yeah, I feel like. Yeah. What's kind of the difference between the two from like a creative perspective? Um. The creative perspective, I'd say the law of lipstick, I was, I think I was just getting started and I felt that I need to be seen. Mm -hmm. And now I realize that I want to be heard. And so it's a little more powerful. It's more about me. It's creating for me and for fun. And why can't you find the joy in it? You don't need to be a supermodel. You don't need to be an author. You don't need to be yeah. any number of things to put yourself out there in whichever way you feel. Um, it's more so just following that pull. I think. And mm. I think, yeah, before I was kind of creating in the eyes of other people or what will, what does the internet want to see? Right. Um, and now it's more so, how do I feel about it? Do I actually like that trend? Probably not, you know? And, and yeah. what's, what am I all about kind of thing? Like blazers came back in with huge shoulders like recently. And I was like, <laughs> yes, thank God. 
Yeah. But, you know. And I was like, God, I hate this. I, I ordered <laughs> the dress I ordered. Yeah. It looks like we have tiny frames. It looks terrible on us. <laughs> well, I fine. don't know. I just love the, like, I have Structure. no. So, yeah. I have, yeah, I have no boobs and I have hips. So, kind of like. Oh, okay. It gives, gives you a nice little hourglass. Mm-hmm. A little, little something. Yeah. <laughs> I really love that we're having this conversation because even after we had had our call with you weeks ago now. Um, Mm -hmm. I was on a call for work and I had my headband on, which I love. I had hoops on and a a few necklaces. And I remember recalling kind of this type of conversation and thinking it's okay to Mm -hmm. look like this, like whatever, it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter. But you do have those Mm -hmm. moments where you think, is this too much in business? Mm -hmm. Right. In that environment. Yeah. 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 I was on a call recently and we were on video at work and I had her lipstick on and I was like, uh, should I like, take this off did I overdress but and also it was all men and I was like whatever I don't know like it is what it is now but you still have that moment of like to say whatever right now is like a big thing because in the moment I'm like mm-hmm. am I standing up too much am I too much of anything what's where what's my place here kind of thing I think you kind of question that doubting yourself yeah. in that way doubting yourself yeah I like what you said with the call her Carla, that this is just for you and it's the stuff that you want to do. And I kind of like, we've had that same discussion around the podcast as well, where it's like, yeah, you don't even need a bigger vision of what it has to become, but it's really empowering. And I think this is what stops a lot of people from following their creative desires is like trying to know, well, what is it going to become? It has to be perfect. And like you said, like, you don't have to be an author. I don't have to like keep a blog up it's just like I want to do and share the things I want to do in the moment without it needing to be part of some grander plan Mm -hmm. that's right yeah and like when I started my blog it was like it was percolating for a long time and then I saw this thing on the internet you've probably seen it it's just like a I think it says um say nothing do nothing be nothing and then I was like oh my god I don't want to die with all my words inside me (laughs) I have to share them with the world like I don't even and it's not even that I felt like I had anything overly important to say, but I felt that I did have something to say. Mm-hmm. And I felt like that was worth sharing. But I mean, it took me, oh God, it took me hours and hours and hours to get my website just right. I didn't want to look amateur. I wanted everything to be just so, but like, yeah, like you said, perfectionism was holding me back for a long time. And then all of a sudden I was like, we just have to put this out there. It needs to just go up and I need to start it. Um, it's not perfect. Like I have the website down now because it's under construction. Things are still evolving, but the, the work that's gone into it in the background, like when you see a picture on the, on the grid, it's, I probably shot it myself with a ring light. I probably waited for natural light. Um, I probably put a sheet over this door right here. Um, I probably had flowers. I probably, then I edited the photo and then I have like a million different photos and I'm not happy with any of them. So at least sometimes it takes so long just to get the idea because sometimes I want, I have an idea and I want to shoot it right away. And then it sometimes it doesn't actually come out the way I want it to. So like, that's another creative thing that's going on in the background. I'm also, I, my dad gifted me his, um, his Nikon film camera. Um, so I've been playing with that. that. So like, I feel like there's all kinds of different things you can do. And, and of course it's intimidating at first, but what's the harm in trying, right? Totally. Go for it. I love Mm -hmm. that. And I think it's just like the more that everyone can do that and just kind of trust these creative pulls, like you said, no matter Mm -hmm. where they're starting from, whether it's like to just escape something, or even if it doesn't fit with your current identity, it's mm-hmm. so because it, it is explore. that explore explore like just give yourself permission yeah. to try something. Mm-hmm. Have you found um, have you found it easier in Toronto, like in your corporate life for this to be kind of the norm? I just feel like it's a bigger city. Mm. It's a bigger city, but the law never changes. No matter <laughs> <what>. <laughs> like, you know, if, do you know what I mean? Like the people that, that the law attracts. OK, Um no shade, not, not dragging anyone. I just mean that, you know, a lot of times people don't embrace their creative side. I'm sure there are lots of lawyers who do. Um, but I think in the corporate world, it's not something, it's probably easier to do what I'm doing. Um, but you still think like, I don't, is my boss looking at my Instagram? Um, I don't know, she's still judging me. I don't know if she thinks that I'm frivolous because I have these interests, maybe. Um, am I not serious enough? Um, 
Has she brought, has, she, have you talked to her about this stuff? So we actually did talk about it early on because, um, well, I think something came up. Oh, I, I was sitting in a, I was sitting on a panel at Osgood for fashion week. And she was like, Oh, that's interesting. Like, how'd you get into that? And I explained the Instagram thing. So yeah, so I'm sure that she's she's seen my Instagram and everything. I, it just felt a little. I guess there were fewer barriers there, mm-hmm. and because I was participating in this this panel at the law school, I guess it was kind of still related to my job. So yeah, I've had more opportunities that way. Like I, I've, sp- I've spoken on panels at law schools I haven't attended, which I found like hilarious, but also like really cool growth opportunities. Yeah, good yes. to meet a lot of cool people. Um, yeah, so I've done some stuff like that. Um, also met some really amazing creative people. And I think that I sought that out everywhere I went, like every different province. Mm-hmm. So I think that you do, you do attract what you need and you do attract the right people, but it was also a process of seeking it out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you really want to do it, you can. Did, did you at any point, I'm just jumping here. A question just came to me. Mm-hmm. Um, were you at any point debating leaving law? Like, was this something that you were wondering, am I, do I need to put all of my time and my efforts into this creative side or like, has it always been a balance for you? I feel like they're going to combine. Yeah, well, I, I know. they're going to combine soon. I can like, feel it. Every person I talk, yeah, can you feel it happening? Yeah, it's <laughs> just, just the way so you're okay. talking it's, about it's, it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your question, but first I'm going to tell you the story. So when I first moved here, I went to a Mac at the Eaton Center because I needed a new concealer, okay? I started chatting with the makeup artist. She's my friend now. Her name is Esther. She works with Chanel now. She's fabulous. <laughs> um, yeah, she's awesome. Um, anyway, we started chatting. She's like, what do you do? Da, da, da. There's some like some people around and just they were trying to manage the store anyway. And we got to ch- chatting and she was like, I just feel that your legal career and your creative life are going to like join. She literally did that. That's she did that motion, and I'm just like, she's like, I feel like it's just gonna come together. And meanwhile, she's like doing my face, and I was like, what are the chances? Just randomly meeting this person who doesn't even know me. I start talking about my life, my creative life, and she's like, I just have a feeling. And I love it when people say that. It feels so great. It feels, you know, it's really like a sign. Fills my cup. It's like such a sign. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's a good story, but, um, so things like that happen and I, I can't pass it up. I just, it just is so cool. Um, but to go back to your question, um, yeah, when I lived in Fredericton, I was working in a very toxic work environment, details that I will not go into. I'm not allowed to go into, but, um, (laughs) it was really rough. It was a really hard time in my life. Um, I would say the deepest dark, not to be dramatic, but it was like the deepest, darkest winter, um, and it was literally in the winter, so it was made extra, extra, dark. <laughs> extra yeah. dark. Extra bad. Yeah, extra bad. Um, but yeah, during that time, um, I saw the really ugly side of firm life. I saw the ugly side of a lot of people. Um, and it was hard in, in the in the career. And I, I thought that at that time, I was like, is this what I want for myself? Mm. If this is what the practice is like, I do not want it. Um, I don't want to be associated with these people. I don't want to be associated with this kind of lifestyle. Um, I don't want any of it. And so, yeah, for a while I was like, should I be creating? Should, maybe I don't belong here. Maybe I don't belong. That, that has come up through my whole career. Maybe I do not belong. Um, and so from that, I did start to lean more into my creative work, but my, my work life was so difficult that it affected my creativity. So Mm. during that time, I feel like all my creative work came from a dark place. And so for a long time, the law of lipstick came from a dark place. I felt like my best work came from a dark place or from struggle Mm -hmm. or from grief or from difficult anything. Um, But it was a really difficult period. And I was kind of thinking, no, if this is it, I don't, I can't do it. Um, And so, yeah, the not belonging, but eventually I left that situation. I got to Toronto. Um, I felt like there was light at the end of the tunnel. I started to enjoy my work again. I was in a healthier workplace. Like all that stuff kind of started to change. And then of course came the blog and the name change and all that. And I feel like it was kind of like a a lovely progression that I could never have predicted. If you had talked to me back in 2017 about what the law of lipstick was going to be, I would have been like, Oh, just pictures of my makeup or my outfit or whatever, whatever it feels like at the time. Um, 
or perhaps even who I'm working with at the time that could have influenced me. I felt like I was very vulnerable and easily influenced at the time. Um, but now it's kind of been, it's been such a growth into understanding who I am too. I think that takes a long time sometimes. Totally. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And I think you said this the other day on our call, we're all, we all have different seasons in our life. Like we're not mm-hmm. the same person we were last year or years ago. So you're definitely, you just seem like you are meant to be where you are. And it's just so nice. I don't even know you. This is the first time we've really, <laughs> we met the other day, but I feel like you were on the right path of where you're meant to be. Thank yeah. Thank you. That feels so nice. And do you find that now you've kind of settled into your vision of Call Her Carla and what it is that it's given you more freedom in your career as a lawyer as well? Yeah, um, I really think that because I don't hold myself back as much, I mean, it still takes a lot of work to not judge myself, question myself. I mean, ask Max, my partner, he's always like, Carla, just you got to go with your gut instinct, go with the first. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. (laughs) Why am I censoring myself? It's always a censoring, you know? Um, and the rewriting and the like, but anyway, yeah. Um, I feel like I'm getting there. I feel like it's still going to evolve. Um, but I feel like the creative side, it, it impacts my work because I approach my work differently. Like I find joy in different places now. Mm, that's um, awesome. Yeah. And I read, I read Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert recently and I felt like it changed my life. Have you guys read that? No, but you've mentioned it before. Okay. Yeah. What was sort of the gist of that? Write that down. The gist of it is Big Magic. Yeah. I I read it years ago, but I wasn't ready for the message. Um, yeah, it was basically saying like, find the joy. Like if you, if you enjoy something, just do it. You don't need to be world-class. You don't need to be anything. Do it for yourself. Mm. And I was like, rah, rah, rah. Yes. Do it for yourself. And so I guess I stopped or not stopped because it's always going to be there, but stop worrying so much about what people think and how is this going to look? Um, You know, is this what I should be putting out there? It's more so it has to come from me Mm. and just for the joy of it. Like, you know, I took a picture the other day in a suit with a bag of chips. Like that was what I was feeling at the moment. I was like, I'm eating chips tonight with my drinks. Like, I don't know. Like, I, be more authentic. You know like, what? I actually 100%. really love that post because I love <laughs> yeah. Miss. It was Miss Vicky's chips. And it. what flavor so was good. it? It was like very it was spicy pickle. And I read your so, caption and I like it stuck with me. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't think I saw this like, one. There you go. I'm yeah. Also, those chips are really good. Everyone was knocking them. They are delicious. They are incredible. <laughs> I didn't think I didn't expect to like them. Don't go. Listen, really we're good. on a juice cleanse right now. Say. You oh, could tell sorry, us they were any off. type of chip and <laughs> don't we would go into, into too much them. detail. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You yeah. look amazing. Yeah, doesn't she look fabulous? We're going to, so you'll have <laughs> angles, to look at the show notes. Okay, no, not angles, Carla. You look fabulous. And this is what I love. I love this. The other thing I love about you that I'm just going to throw out there, you always use this hashtag. What is, or no, one I've seen you use is thick thighs and thin patience, which I love. Ooh, <laughs> which we need um, to use that. I die. got to use that. That's so funny. I haven't used that one in a while. That's so good. Yeah. We should use like good butts reminder. and brains. Butts and brains. I love that. That's a good one. I like that. But I like that. Yeah. One of the things I do love about you is like you embrace your body and your figure and you, you play it up and it's awesome. It's so nice. It's refreshing nice. to see that authentic content i'm so glad to hear that yeah because i feel like you know i could pick myself apart because i do that anyway um who <laughs> you doesn't? know but um who doesn't yeah i think it's kind of another big thing about even just being out there in this way on instagram is like telling other women no matter what they're doing in their lives no matter what their career is what their roles are you can do it too i mean you just it's about finding the time you mm-hmm. can always find the time when you really want to do something like I get up early to get the sunrise if I need the light or I catch the, I mean, now I have more light, but, or I'm working after working, bring the midnight, excuse me, midnight oil, um, trying to create the blog, writing things, just making the time for it. I think that that's the biggest part of it. I think it's just embrace whatever it is you like. If you like crocheting, go for it. (laughs) If you, you know, like whatever it is you like. I think that's the bring the joy piece. Yeah. 
And, and it's so nice. You. Yeah. Sarah's going through this now too with her project. Mm-hmm. It's like do something you actually enjoy doing. And hey, mm-hmm. newsflash, it can be work. You know what I mean? Like no, you but can it's, make it's money enjoyable. off that. And yeah, yeah. You just enjoy it. Yeah. It's very yeah. cathartic. <laughs> it, it definitely it actually is yeah because i mean for a long time i was like should i do this because i'm not making money off it should i not be like should i should i should i but like like i said with the blog it was like if i don't do it what kind of regrets will i have mm-hmm. and sometimes if i feel like this is like my innate calling in some in some way i don't know what the ultimate calling is but it's there it's on you're on the way you know so but that's the thing is you can't see the path. You don't know where it's going to lead you. And I think we have to be okay with doing things without having a plan sometimes. That's right. And I'm very plan oriented. Very <laughs> this is good. I love plans. It's those two worlds coming together like, again. <laughs> hopefully. Like the lot, yeah, the logical and like the whimsical kind of, yeah, free spirited thing. But um, definitely. Yeah. Trusting the path is really hard, but it's so worth it and we we enjoy doing this so much too it's it doesn't feel we don't we've never put pressure on it to feel like work and I think that's why we enjoy it so much yeah and the few times that we do make decisions for like a business decision or they're not what we want we need to like it never goes well and we always have to come back and we've learned let's adjust Mm -hmm. like even Mm -hmm. like from how we promote it like stuff like that it takes we can't do the stuff that drains us because it just doesn't do it yeah, we just uh, or we just won't do it, and no one will notice right. except for us. <laughs> Same with you, Carla. Probably if something's not perfect in your mind, no one's going to mm-hmm. notice. It's just going to notice. That's just it. it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be like, oh, I should have taken out that background random thing no. in the photo. No one's going to notice that. You know? No, or no. we love it. Maybe I might should have had better sentences. Maybe it was like you know, I I really there's so many ways that you can you can pick yourself apart, and you know, but yeah, as long as it's authentic to you. I I feel like this gives us all liberty to pursue those passions and the things that we're being called to. And I hope that we, that I hope some people will go do that after listening to this episode. Because you can. And you should. I hope so. Yeah, you should. You absolutely should. I mean, it's been a lot of work. I can't downplay that. I've had a lot of support. I've met a lot of great people. I feel like every person I've worked with in the creative sphere, in the legal sphere has had some kind of impact on on my outlook of where I'm going with Call for Carla and creative life. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really eye opening too. I felt like I was meeting myself for the first time. When I started doing this stuff. Damn. Yeah. 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 Seriously though. And that's when, but that's when the rest of my life started. Like, so when I started to blow my life up, I was like, Oh, she's here. She's back. We're going to use this as her. a quote for, for your this episode promotion. Quote. So good. Carla. <laughs> <laughs> the hair flick and all. One one thing I have on that question is like, what did your family think when you started stepping into this? Like your parents and like your sister and people that you were closest with. Friends. Yeah. So a lot of my girlfriends, so I had a lot of really supportive girlfriends, the ones who were staffing my photos, the girls at work, like that became really good friends. Um, People just generally, my close girlfriends are super supportive. They'll write me and say, I read your blog, love it. You like, they'll give me all these like, and feedback. And I also have a lot of girlfriends who I send my work to and they'll edit. They'll say, what about this? Or I feel like you're trying to get all this out in this tiny, this tiny paragraph, but it needs to wait for later. Like they'll give me some really great feedback and I love getting constructive feedback of any sort. Um, So I have a lot of that. My sister has always been, I love this. I've been waiting for this. Like I shared some writing with her that was super like personal. And she was just like, I've been waiting for you to share this with the world. I'm like, I love you. Like we're so, we're so different, but she's the most supportive. She's like, yeah, she's just so wonderful. And my parents have been super supportive too. Like dad was like, when you get your webpage done, can you send it to me? And like, mom will like, (laughs) yeah, she'll just be, I love that photo. Or like she'll comment on my words or whatever. And I find that really refreshing too. And even my extended family have been really awesome. I have an aunt who used to live in Texas. Now she lives in Newfoundland again. But um, she supported my, like, being different phase through high school, having all, like, the unique things she used to send me. And now she's still super supportive of my work. And I have so many family members who are just, like, I don't know. It's really, it's really, it's it's really lovely, you know, just when That's I think nice. about it. Because, yeah, I don't always. But, um, yeah, it's really good. It's so nice to hear. I love hearing that because it's nice to see that when you're stepping into these things that feel mm-hmm. vulnerable, that 
like those mm-hmm. closest to you are just going to lean into it with you. Mm-hmm. For sure. And I mean, there are always going to be people going to be people who poke holes in your boat. And sometimes those people are close to you too. Um, you know, I've, I think that's the, despite all the good things that have come from this endeavor, these endeavors, I guess, <laughs> um, it's been, I've lost some friendships because of, of, I guess, the path I'm taking. Um, and for different reasons that have been colored by different words, I don't know. But still, there's some people who just don't understand it, um, can't support it, can't, you know, and that's fine. Like, I don't need, you don't need everyone. You just need the people who, who are, who love you and support you. And um, the people who don't, I mean, they got to go. No, they can go to hell. I mean, <laughs> Isn't that like a song? Yeah, I feel I like the no, people like, that don't, they can go to, I don't know. Anyways, that just came to me. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Like, you know, when they say, um, uh, it's you can you can eat just not at my table for a long time. I was like, I don't even want you to eat. Like, leave me alone. Like, I can't believe it. You're so awful. <laughs> like, just kind of like upset about it because it's really upsetting to lose friends who are super close to you and you think um, deep down really support you. But to hear such negative feedback, I mean, I had vanity project one time. And I, I was really upset about that because I was like, this is the one thing bringing me joy in my life right now and you have to cut it down. So yeah, I think that sometimes you can work past these things with friends, like try to like, but you know, I, I'm kind of done explaining myself. If you have to explain yourself to every person, what's the point? You know, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. you don't need to explain what you're doing. Um, like, what are you doing with your Instagram? And I'm like, oh, I'm just having fun. Like, I, you know, that thing that you do. You have Whatever you sometimes. want. Yeah. It's so I think that's, been, that's probably been the hardest part. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, that's been probably the hard part. But I mean, also like have some really great support. So it's nice to see the though. Difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to see that despite those difficulties, that even if people do fall away, which is inevitable anytime we go through change, mm-hmm. like any sort of change. But That's even to it. see yeah. your family and those other supports mm-hmm. lean in and step up more kind of like strengthens those bonds, I find. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, you're not going to be, I feel like I'm a different person every day. Like, you just feel like you're evolving all the time. And season one, me, like season one, Love, love Lipstick Carla had really poor funding. And now we're moving into like the Netflix funding season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I try to look She's at it going like up. <laughs> yeah we're like stepping up a little Big bit time. um yeah but i think that's that's growth too i mean if you're not growing honestly you become stagnant and that's not good either i mean i went through so much change over the past five years that when i start to slow down i'm like what's wrong like why am i not moving but you're moving in other ways that you probably needed you probably need to take a breath take mm-hmm. a breather you know I love that. Mm-hmm. Your journey's so lovely. And I feel like, yeah, there's, like I said before, you're, you're where you're meant to be. I Especially know. in Toronto. I feel like things, things will come together. It's just nice to see I you kind so. of get to that point of your identity that you can be both the lawyer and the creative. I love that so much. Yeah. Like I, I actually struggled for a long time being like, maybe I'm not meant to be a lawyer. Maybe I'm not, maybe I should be a creative in some way. And just that should be my career. And now I'm dating a creative, like he's, he works in film he's assistant director and I see the struggles of that career too, but he's super passionate about what he does. And I think, um, I think that kind of feeds into my creative life too. I'm like, Oh wow. It's so amazing that you can do that every day Mm -hmm. and love it. I'm going to do what I truly love on the side while having the job that can really support. I think that I'm actually, you know, so lucky to have a job that can support all these whims as well you know Mm -hmm. I can follow my dreams because I have this great day job that I also enjoy Mm -hmm. you know um and also stepping into I think this has taken a little bit of time just practicing the law or just being a lawyer um actually accepting that I'm a lawyer like saying I am a lawyer and I'm happy to be a lawyer and this is who I am and I I'm also meant to be a lawyer meant to be a lawyer and a creator and that's going to show up in different ways as time goes on but it feels good too because I feel like I've worked so hard to get here lost my heart <laughs> you know and you're, and you're yeah and like I ended up you know getting my MBA with it too which was like the best thing I ever did it was so much fun but um you're so you're on that career path you're looking for your articles the pressure's on they say get your articles work at a big firm 
you know, become, um, become an associate, <laughs> become a partner, like this, this normal train, like from the get go, I was always like, I'm going to do this my own way. I just didn't know how that was going to, to really show up. So here to doing it your own way. No matter what. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah. embracing it. I love that you said that yeah. you are, you are a great lawyer. And you're a fabulous looking lawyer, which is oh, just, just a bonus. bonus. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carl, it seems like there's so many cool things happening for you, especially, you know, on your day to day career and then your creative career. But like, what are, what are you excited about? What's lighting you up right now? Um, I'm honestly really excited to start writing more. I'm excited to start leaning into uh, doing more film photography on my own, taking photos of things and doing more editing and more of the background work. Um, I think I'm just, I'm really excited about leaning into whatever comes up and not, and trying not to follow Instagram algorithms. And I'm not <laughs> doing it, you know, like I'm not doing it for the likes. I'm not doing it. I don't want to look like every other Instagram person out there, you know, um, I think it's yeah leaning into that and uh listening to it because like it it comes up all the time and you know sometimes I have the pull to write and I I know I need to write about something and I'll put it off and put it off put it off I'll be like, I wonder why I feel so shitty mm -hmm. maybe you've been repressing all those feelings from whatever else you know whatever you're dealing with um at the time and yeah so sometimes like some really great stuff comes out in my writing also working out I get all kinds of great inspiration from because I mean right now we're on we're on lockdown effectively mm -hmm. or super shutdown third emergency <sighs> shutdown order or yeah um nice. yeah so it's tough right so I try to get when I get for my walks I'm listening to a podcast and or just listening to nothing and kind of letting things percolate because it's so hard to get inspiration lately I feel like it's kind of been hard you're you're inspired by what you see but you're not inspired by what what's inside mm -hmm. I think it's, it's sometimes it's hard to put the phone down and be like, wait, what do I want to do? What's coming to me rather than looking at what everyone else is doing? Because that can be hard too. I'm like, oh my God, it feels like everyone's doing so many great things right now. And yeah, what have I accomplished in the last year? <laughs> like those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to more unexpected. Just going um, with it. Just like keep your curiosity alive you know oh i love that mm -hmm. oh so, so good. much to explore stay curious yeah all right now it is time for our favorite part of the show i don't know that it's our favorite i just don't know how to introduce it we're gonna play Qu the Queenie silliest Grams. part of the silliest show. part of our show we're gonna play Ooh, queenie graham so a made-up game very easy to play all you do is pick a number between one and 101 and we'll ask you a question we'll all take a turn so you're up first, Carla. What number? Um, 33. 33. Ash, I put a new one in here for you. Oh, you ready for uh -oh. this one? What is your most ready. recent Google search? I never want this to be my question. <laughs> I, okay, so I actually this is can't. danger. You know what? That's hilarious. <laughs> I know what mine is. Can you eat on a juice cleanse? <laughs> <laughs> She's oh, you know what mine that's so funny. Um, mine was actually is is Skims sold in Canada because I was talking to one of my colleagues, my work wife, about uh, Skims because she had just gotten them from the actual website, and I was like, no, I think you can get them from Nordstrom. You can't. You can get them from Nordstrom in the states. Right. Anyway, we were talking about Skims. So, have you guys tried them? No, but no. I want to. Yeah, I know. Me too. She loves them. The jammies so. look good. Word to the wise. Ooh, yeah. try them out. Mine was um, the Coast newsletter because we're looking at. We're, we're getting excited for burger week is coming up here. Oh, so that, nice. that was good. Ash, why don't you pick a number? What between what? One and one Oh one. So is one Oh one the new one? Yeah, it is. Okay. Girl. I'm going to go with one Oh one. <laughs> All right, here we go, Ash. I don't think you're going to like this one, but I, I was, I put it in thinking of Carla. Um, if you <laughs> came with a warning label, what would it say? Ooh, or an instruction manual, you know, either one. Uh -oh. oh, I yeah. like warning better than okay. instruction. Um, very picky. <laughs> Stay picky. Stay picky. I, I, okay. I'm okay with that. I'm very, or like very yeah. particular, but I like, yeah. like yeah. that I'm particular. Anyway, no, that's what, good. What would yours say? What would mine say? 
mm, loud, like <laughs> like morning loud. Yeah, loud. loud load. Like I don't know. Like wear earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's fair. Amazing. I think that's what mine would yeah. say. How about yours, Carla? <laughs> um may have emotions and may be mean. I don't know. Like I feel may like mean. Like I feel like when I'm not mean, but like hard aggressive it's very aggressive Ooh. yeah like i my emotions like i like don't mess with i can you be very emotional and very sensitive but also i can be very this is feedback from max i i can be very emotional and very soft and all that stuff but i can also be very like to the point and very rigid very blunt okay. Direct. very blunt mm-hmm. yeah that's always Maybe shocking blunt. for people when they think you're just like really emotional <laughs> then you right like yeah, when people think, oh, like she's just this, like, whatever. And then I'm like, no. no. <laughs> do you know what else I would put on mine? It's like, do not come within three feet or will be touched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prepare to be touched. Yeah. Prepare to be touched. <laughs> All right, Sarah, you, your it. turn. I'm feeling like 23 for some reason. I was thinking 23. I thought when Carla said 33, she said 23. This is a perfect question for this group bubbles <laughs> or no bubbles in your wine? I'm going for oh bubbles. God. I bubbles. want the Prosecco, the Champagne. Cava. The sparkling Luvo. Mm-hmm. Same. Mm-hmm. Cava. I need to try Luvo. Is it available in... You can order it online. Oh, it's really? so good. Okay. Yeah, we're obsessed with it. The Rosé is our favorite. Yeah, so good. And the Muscat oh, the, Mint. The Mint. Both, like, they're, oh, all, yeah. they're all good. I really like... Anyways, this is becoming a Luvo ad. It's not their episode. <laughs> Everyone knows. It's Maybe so it will be. Everyone knows. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, mine's obviously bubbles. I mean, I do love red wine. Oh, but. they have a chilled red. Anyways, I love the chilled red too. Just get them yeah, all. Also, get the whole I'll pack. Them all. I have to. Yeah. Take a photo and then take a photo. One. Yeah. Yeah. No, I will for sure. They're so good. Um. So, do you want bubbles or no bubbles in your wine, Carla? She oh, said bubbles. bubbles. Oh, bubbles. Yeah. Sorry, I missed for this. Sure. I love red wine, but I also like. I prefer bubbles. Yeah. I'm with you. Amazing. This has been so good. Where can people find you online? Um, just on Instagram right now. So at Call Her Carla. Um, my website's currently down, but it'll be back up and it'll be just linked on my on my page. But yeah, um, some fun stuff coming up there. Hopefully, some more um, collaborations. More, just more me and whatever I feel. Oh, so, amazing! I love always we'll seeing keep your an posts. eye out. Yeah, Carla, this Thank has been so fabulous. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you, girls. Thank you. Bye.